Hi guys, this is William and welcome to this new video where we'll be discussing values. So in past lessons we've looked at conditions and to recap, conditions can be so seen as a sort of a switch that we use in the world to signify a state or a condition. Now values are very similar to conditions but it gives us the ability to set up more complex states and checks. Now one thing to keep in mind is that conditions can only ever be in one of two states. Either it is true or it is false. So it's a binary choice always. Now this is okay for simple checks like activating or deactivating an object in the game world. You know, door is open, door is not open, light is switched on, light is not, light is switched off. But we want more complex checks, right? So let's say we want our character to look at a fish tank object. And uh, instead of just two responses, we want four responses. So the, the condition will not work because condition is just true or false. You'll have to create two conditions or three conditions. It, it gets messy. So uh, if you want more complex checks, then values uh, that's the route to go because conditions are too limited in that sense. So what are values? Values are simply a stored number, right? That we can evaluate against. So let's look at an example and we'll use the fish tank look at. So this might look familiar because we follow the same uh, um, example in the conditions. So the general structure will be like this. If value, because we're going to run an if statement, right? If this is true, then character says this. If this is true, then the character says this. If this is false, the character, we skip and we move on to the next one. So here I have if value. In the earlier lessons, we looked at the action part called if condition. We also have an if value action part. Okay, that's what I'm using here. And then we have this, look at fish tank count. This is an actual value that I created. Uh, like in the previous one, uh, in the condition video, we created a condition. This is just we create a value. So we don't do the assignment here, don't get confused. This is the evaluation. But when I created it in a separate exercise, I added the initial value to be 1. Now here... My if statement says, if the value look at fish tank equals one, then this happens. The character says, this is the first time I've looked at the fish tank. If my value look at fish tank equals two, then my character says, this is the second time I've looked at the fish tank. And then the same with number three. My character says, this is the third time I've looked at the fish tank. Now, there's just a few things we need to look here. Uh, at the end, always add your end if, that's important. But we've got a new uh, action part called else if, right? Now, else if is just uh, 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 the if statement that runs if the first if statement is false. So if value um, look at fish tag equals one is false, then go here. Else if this is false. Then go here, else if, look at fish tank equals 3. This is true, great, right? If, let's say, this one was true, then it would go, if value look at fish tank equals false, then it would go here, it would see this is true, and then it would go there, right? So that's how the general structure works. It's just important to keep that in mind. Now, the next thing I want to just highlight is that in its current state, in this state right here, this will not work properly. Uh, our character will always say this, right? And the reason is, is because our value, look at fish tank count, never increases. So in a separate exercise, I went and I added, I, I set the value there for that to be 1. And now if this runs, it will be 1 and it'll say, the character will say that. It'll jump down to this. If I look at it again, it will evaluate true here, and the character will say this. So what we need to do is, if the character has said this, we need to increase 
the value by one. So if if value equals one, like this does this is displayed, and then at at the end here we increment the look at fish tank with plus one. So then suddenly the look at fish tank count is two. Then this evaluates to false, and then we go here, and this then suddenly is said. Then it increments again, and we start the process, and then this is true. And the character says this. So important to keep that in mind. Um, you know, practice is very good with these sort of things. Um, and just as a practical example then, you can see here at the end, I've actually added it. So look at when it's gone through, it increments it by one. Um, and this documentation is available as well on the website, uh, on the Visionaire uh, website. Uh, so download it and uh, check it out. So now we, we're going to practically do it, right? Now I will go into my hallway scene here and take a look at this area. Here we can add conditions, but we want to go to values, right? Here I'm going to add a value. And the way I do that is I click on this little plus icon and then my value is created and it asks me to rename it. So I am going to call it look at fish tank look at fish tank count now when I click on it I can change the different uh, different settings so first up I can set the initial value what will the initial value be we can also have this be a random value so if I tick this then these two become active these two fields so a random value between minimum zero and maximum five, for instance. But I'm not going to use the random value. I want my initial value to be one. Okay. We can also add a string here. So this could be a character's name that we reference or uh, what have you. So our value has been created and it is ready to be used. So let's use it then. We are going to choose my fish tank object. I am going to go into actions and here I want my um, different responses to play when I look at it. So I am going to add a new look item and then what I will need to do here is I need to add new action parts. So remember Always remember the example I showed at the beginning of the video. We said the first thing is we need to do an if value. So I'm going to click on the condition if value area and I'm going to choose if value. Okay. So here we can now set our value. What do we want to check? Right. We want to check this value I created. If look at fish tank equals one, then character says this. Now, you have these different options here, and the one you need to look at is this first value. So I can now click here to go and choose it, right? Under scenes, there we go. But a quick way to do it is just simply to drag to it in this interface, right? By clicking and dragging, okay? Now, the rest of these items, this is not applicable in this exercise, but we do have a second value here. Now, this is optional, and if a value is entered here, this is the one we use to evaluate to. If it is empty, this is the one that we evaluate to, this number. So, what do we want to do? We want to check if this value equals 1. Okay. Now we have our operator here. Here we can set various things, but in this instance it makes sense to say if to have an equal one, because that's what we want to check, right? So now let's go and let's add a display text for our character. And I'm going to display text and I'm just going to paste, paste it in. So there we go. Now, remember my original example? If that equals one then the character says this okay easy enough now what we need to do is we need to do the second part of it right so if it equals two then we add a second one now 
we said we needed to use an else if here. And the way you do that is you add an if value again. So I'm going to just add if value. And then I have this tick box called else if. And I'm going to tick that. Right? And then I'm just going to repeat the steps. So if, if this is one, then this is true. Else if this is two, I'm changing it here, right? So else if the look fish tank equals two, then our character says this. This is the second time I've looked at the fish tank, right? Now let's repeat the process for the third. And instead of adding new things, I'm just going to select this. I'm going to press Control C and I'm going to Control V to paste it. And I'm going to reorder my items properly so that it makes sense. Now I'm going to change that to three because remember the original example that we wanted. And then I'm going to say this is the third time. Third time I've looked at the fish tank. And then, of course, let's add in your end if action part at the end. Now, keep in mind, once again, this will not work because our counter, look fish tank count one, always remains one. So this will always evaluate to true. And we can take a look at that quickly by looking at our fish tank. This is the first time. This is the first time. But it's not. Right. So what do we need to do? We need to increment this by one each time the if statement has been run and back to my original example remember it, we need to do that here now to affect the value we need to use an action part called set value right there so I'm gonna choose that and it's the same window as what you've seen before so here we can now affect the number so once again, I'm going to choose which value do I want to set. I want to set my look fish tank. What do I want to do? I want to increase plus by how many numbers do I want to increase it? I want to increase it by one. So just think about this now. If value, we click on the, the window. If value is equal one, this plays. Then it runs through. Here it increments by one. So this becomes two. Then we run again, and uh, then here this is displayed, and then this becomes 3. Okay, and then last time it runs there the same. So let's take a look quickly. This is the second time, this is the third time. Works great. Now, I quickly want to show you one more thing. If you run the game and you press Tab, right if you run the game with from within visionaire you will get this debug console if you click on values you will see the look at fish tank there the the value so i'm going to now click on this and take a look at this number you see it incremented to two i'm going to click there again it incremented to three so this is just a good way for you to be able to check what's going on in the background when you work. So that's tab, right? Very handy. Uh, so now we're going to discuss one more thing here. If we, we've got all of this that happens, but we also, we want a fourth and final response. So we don't want, if, if this is, if the look at fish tank is not one, not two, not three, if the look at fish tank count is anything else other than one, two, or three, then we want a final response to be said every time. And for that, we use a different action part called else. So that's right there. Okay, and I'm just going to move it up because I want it within the statement. So here, I'm going to add one more display text. And here, I will say I've looked at it too many times. So the else statement is always displayed if all of this evaluates to false. 
Okay, and it will because we go through this. We say that, and then we say this, and then we say that, and then we increment it to four, and then none of these apply, and then this needs is said. Right. So let's take a look. One, two, three, four. Right, and that is values. So values have got a wide application um, uh, in in Visionaire. It's got a wide range of uses, especially when you get to dialogues, which we'll get to later. All right, guys, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you in the next one.